Hello everyone and welcome to the video for the Aperture vs. Lightroom blog. I'm your host, William Beam. We're going to start off looking at Aperture's import settings and I've opened up the preferences to the import option already and there's a couple things here you want to take a look at. One of them is what behavior do you want to happen when you connect a camera to your computer? I've got mine set for no application. I, I don't really want Aperture or any other program to launch just because I plugged in a media card to my computer. But you do have the option if you set this to Aperture as soon as you plug in uh, your card reader with a card in it, it, you can set it to go ahead and launch Aperture or another application if it's set for it. I, I prefer to go ahead and push the buttons myself. If you want to have a default location set, you can do that with either a new project every time. I've chosen to have a selected project, meaning that I've already gone ahead and created the project and then everything will import to there. Also, you can auto split your projects. So depending upon a time setting, for example, if you go on vacation for a week, you could have a new project for every day. You may have an event where you want to really separate them. There's uh, two hour gaps and eight hour gaps. I've Technically, I, I don't really care for that myself. I would rather have the everything go into the project I've selected. So I've got mine set to the maximum at one project per week. Another option down here, this is new with version 3.3, is where do you want your preview to come from? In previous generations of Aperture, it would always have to generate a preview from the raw file after the import, and that would take time. One of the nice things about the new version is that it will use the raw file that's embedded or excuse me, it'll use the preview that's embedded in your RAW file. That basically lets you get to see and view your photos much faster than if your computer had to take time and generate uh, its own preview. So it's, it's a nice uh, performance enhancing thing. If you're working on a deadline, you definitely want to go ahead and, and work with uh, camera previews. All right, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and hit the import button. And we've got a couple of options here. What you're seeing first, we're up here in the upper left hand corner, I've got Williams iMac. And then down at the bottom, you can see a path going through. These are photographs that I have already on my uh, computer hard disk. In this case, it's on a RAID array, but I've got them set up and I can go ahead and import these. There's a couple of options over here. If you look in the upper right hand side, you can see the destination I have is the project selected that's AVL. I can choose to make a new project if I want to. Also, this one I like to keep, do not import duplicates. If I'm, for some reason, working with a card, I load some up, put it back, shoot some more on the camera, I don't want to load the ones I've already loaded before, so I just simply inform Aperture to look for duplicates and not to import them. And finally, this is an option that you got over here. It's like, where do you want to store these photographs? In their current location, meaning that they will stay in the folder, down here you can see I've got the path going from uh, William to pictures to Sam. That's the name of the folder is Sam. And I could leave the photographs there or I could go up here to in the Aperture library, meaning that it won't delete these folders or photos that are in the folder over here, but what it will do is import them into the actual Aperture library along with the metadata and other information about this particular project. You have other options. You can uh, simply put them in the default pictures uh, or you can go ahead and choose and then come up with a list of other places and favorites, basically making any path that you want to. So you got a lot of flexibility there. Before I get on to the rest of these presets over here, I want to click on this card, which is a card reader I've got. And this is a different shoot. And just note a couple of little differences is, or actually the only difference is you cannot import in their current location when you're coming from a media card. Basically, it's saying that's not a reliable source that Aperture can deal with because your media cards are gonna be used and rewritten and erased. So that's the only distinction you'll see coming between importing from a folder and importing from a media card. You still have uh, the options to do it in the Aperture library or you can choose another folder if you want to do them as a reference rather than a managed uh, series of images. So let's go back over here. All right, the next thing we're going to take a look at is up here this little tab called Import Settings. I have a few of the different panels displayed here. These are the ones that I like to keep loaded, but there are many more that you can look at. Some of them are display only. For example, the file info, 
If we select a file over here, it'll show you the name, date, and pertinent information about the file itself. Rename files gives you an opportunity to go ahead and rename these as you want to. And there are other options later on you'll, where we can uh, automatically rename these files to something else. I don't have a need to rename the files at all. I've, I start off with uh, my in-camera settings, or uh, putting my initials at the beginning of WRB, and then it goes on for, you know, for the numbering. The downside of that, if you're putting everything in the same project over and over again, is after you get to 9999, it's going to reset and start over again. In my workflow, I don't have that many photographs from the same shoot that are going to be uh, going into the same project and library, so it's not a problem. I can leave it that way. But if you want to rename them, then there's opportunities to do that as well. And you can see over here with the version, you can come up with a custom name with index, index with no spaces. Matter of fact, if we uh, type in Sam dash, what it will do is it'll go ahead and use that custom name that I've got over there and the index number will increment one, two, three, four. And you can also uh, come up with counters, image date time. You've got a few different options. Let's click on edit here and take a look at some of these. So in this one, we've got custom name and index set up with that. And you can take a look at the top over here. You see the examples, Sam dash, which is what I've got typed down here. And then one is the index. If we select index over here and hit the delete key, I was going to get the cursor at the end of that and hit the delete key. Let's go over here and take a look at putting a counter up instead of an index. Whoops, if I can get that right. And you can see one of the differences down here at the bottom is increment counter starting at one and number of digits. The difference is the index number is always going to start at one and it's going to increment, you know, one, two, three, four. If for some reason you want to start at a different number, if you want to vary the, the numbers that, are, that it's incrementing, use a counter instead of an index and that will give you that ability. You also can put in a you know, date, time, or current date and time, or the image date and time. You've got all those different options there. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel out of this and leave it as it is. And then we'll go back over here to import settings, take a look. The next item down on our list is time zones. There's uh, a couple of different time zones to look at over here. One is the camera time zone. So for example, I'm based in uh, the East Coast in the Central Florida area, and I'm on that time zone. If I travel out west to California or Las Vegas, I may not remember to change my camera time, but the actual time that I took the photo uh, may be in a different time zone. So this gives you the opportunity to go ahead and set the correct time to display in aperture based off of what your camera time is and what the actual zone was that you were in. So if I were in um, in America and then I want to select another time zone for the West Coast, I could go over here and select uh, Denver if I was in mountain time or look uh, further on down. See what happens when I'm not even took it. There it is, Los Angeles. I could uh, select uh, Pacific Daylight Time if, if need be. So it's kind of helpful to make sure if you're looking at a sunrise photo and it tells you it was 10 a.m. in aperture, the chances are that all you need to do is correct it with a time zone. Let me turn off some of these so we don't clutter the display too much. And this is the most useful one I use. This is the metadata presets. I've got it set for standard, uh, you know, name, address, my uh, contact information and copyright notice and my usage terms. Also, as part of my workflow, I use a color label. So when I import something, I've got it set for orange. That means uh, something specific to me. And I'll show you that in a later video on my workflow. But uh, if you were using your color labels to determine the status of your photographs, you can uh, adjust that here as well. Let's go ahead and edit this just to show you how many various options you have. So there's your IPTC contact information, the content, and scrolling on down, you can see there's information about the image, the status, aperture-specific ones. You could assign a rating to it I, or a flag. I typically would not do that unless you were using that as part of your workflow because it's going to impact everything that gets imported. And custom fields, these are added on by some of my uh, add-on applications. For example, I've got a plug-in for 500px, the copyright uh, information over here. 
I put in as additional fields for myself because that way when I submit this for the Copyright Office, I can track the uh, case number and claim ID. And then once it's re registered, I'll put my registration number in there. Legacy uh, items typically don't use because they are legacy. If you have an older application or need for those fields, they're still present though. And you can go ahead and create uh, new presets. You can duplicate a preset and, and uh, manage it if you want to. So for example, if I do a lot of shoots over at Kennedy Space Center, and I might want to go ahead and fill in some of the fields as far as you know where the image was taken. Typically, I don't do that when I if I'm shooting at different locations. I don't know where I'm going to be unless I've got a preset for it. Then I go ahead and put it in there. But otherwise, if I shoot you know some in Orlando and some in Tampa, one preset isn't going to work for a single import in those locations. So I'll just go ahead and leave that blank and then fill it in later. Let me hit cancel on this. And moving on down the line, effect presets. Again, this is one that I typically don't use myself, but Aperture has a number of presets for effects that you can use. So if you know that you want to auto enhance each one or change the, ex the uh, exposure, there are also uh, some color uh, tricks, cross processing, vintage toy camera, white balance uh, changes. If you want to change everything to a, a daylight or cloudy, go right ahead. And also, uh, black and white effects for different filters. File types. This one is really just about what you don't want to bring in. Aperture supports uh, still photos, video, and audio. And with modern cameras that you can import all that information. If you want to exclude audio files or audio attachments or videos, or for something of those things, or if you have the ability to lock or flag something in your camera and you want to do that so you can exclude it, you just simply have a couple of check boxes here so you can make sure that those don't come in the import and then you have to work on them later. Let's turn these off and go back and take a look down. RAW plus JPEG pairs, you've got options. And you can use uh, both as originals. You can use just one or the other. Uh, typically, I like to have the RAW files only and use those as my masters. But if you import both RAW and JPEG, you can use each one as uh, a combined part of a photograph and use either the JPEG or the RAW as the original. Or you could separate them, and that way you'd have an original for just your RAW file and another original for your JPEG file. So, Actions takes advantage of Apple's uh, Apple script. So basically, you, if you've got uh, a script that you want to do to assign actions to happen on import, then you can go ahead and write that up and uh, select it here. You can use the Apple Automator. It has commands for Aperture as well to build that if you don't want to dig into the code. And I think our last one down here is a backup location. So for some reason, if you want to go ahead and create a backup of the photographs that you're importing to the Aperture library, then you can choose uh, what that location is going to be, if there's going to be a subfolder for it, and what you're going to uh, name it. And with all those things in mind, that's really about uh, the extent of the options I wanted to cover over here. The difference I see is uh, between Aperture and Lightroom are a couple of things. One is that with Aperture, you have the opportunity to go ahead and put your photographs in a library rather than just uh, using it in the current location or selecting a location. I tend to prefer using it in the library because that way you can take advantage of some file management features that are built into Aperture, including backups with uh, the Aperture Vault. And the other aspect of it is that you can import audio files into Aperture as my knowledge is your only photo and videos into Lightroom. For some people that's uh, an important issue and others it, it may not be an important factor. One other thing that I would like to take a look at is upon import, I had this turned off on mine, but let's take a look at our preferences again. General features, there's a, a feature in Aperture that isn't in Lightroom, and that's, it's really caused some consternation with some folks, is Aperture calls it faces. Basically, it's facial recognition. So when you import your photographs, Aperture can identify the face let you uh, associate a name with it and then as you import more uh, photographs with the same person it should uh, tag them and faces and put it on uh, a corkboard so you can see if you want to see all the pictures of in this case my model's name is Sam 
I could enable faces and put it on there. A uh, few folks were upset that Lightroom 4 did not come out with facial recognition. According to a post I read from uh, Tom Hogarty at Adobe, he said they look at their features based upon the demand for it. And while some people wanted facial recognition, there were other features that would have a broader use for uh, more of their audience. And I can understand that. Even though facial recognition exists within Aperture, I don't use it for two reasons. One, it is a bit of a resource hog. It'll uh, it'll spend a lot of time bringing your system to its knees, at least in, in my experience with it testing initially. So it is a, a bit of a resource hog. And two, I found it frustrating that it kept asking me to name faces of people that I didn't know or care about. For example, if I'm taking a photograph and there's a crowded scene, I might only worry about one person, but it, it sees a bunch of faces, so it wants to identify one of them. And it kind of got to the point where I didn't enjoy the benefit as much as uh, I was worried about the cost of using it, both in terms of resources and having to tag all those different faces. It's a feature that's there. If you like it, by all means, go ahead and play with it, see if it works for you. In my case, I turn it off, and that's why if I were looking at Lightroom, the lack of facial recognition really would not be a deal breaker to me, but other people really love it here. So just pointing that out as something that's a difference between the two products. And that's the end of the look at the import settings with Aperture. Thank you very much, and talk to you later.